This is the Milau Viaduct, the tallest bridge in the world. Its highest tower stretches a staggering 343 meters. So high, the bridge glides above the clouds. But this is a mega structure they said couldn't be built. When I shown first the drawing of this bridge, they really thought I was crazy. The team attempting to build this amazing freeway in the sky had to survive landslides. Fight winds gusting at 130 kilometers an hour and weather massive storms as the bridge simply hung in the balance. It's a bridge that pushes the boundaries of engineering to the limits and then beyond. Imagine building a series of Eiffel Towers, then slinging a four-lane highway between them, all the way across one of the deepest valleys in France. Impossible though it sounds, that pretty much describes the building of the Millau Viaduct. From the start, the construction team faced three daunting challenges. One, build the tallest bridge piers in the world. Two, put a 36,000 ton freeway on top of them. And three, erect seven steel pylons, each weighing 700 tons. And what's more, they had to do this hundreds of meters above solid ground. So high that if you were on top of the Eiffel Tower, you'd still be looking up at this awesome bridge. October 2001, the team break ground. They're required to build a bridge that'll last for 120 years. And to win the contract, the teams promise to build it in record time, less than four years. By comparison, the world's longest suspension bridge, the Akashi Kaikyo in Japan, took a full 10 years to build. To up the ante, any delay will cost them $30,000 a day in penalties. There are seven piers that are numbered from the northern end of the valley. Number one will pose problems because of the steep slope. Number two will be the biggest challenge since it's the tallest. Crossing the river, number three is not much shorter. Then four, five, six and seven climb the gentler slope to the south. To begin, the team had to bury the foundations deep in the bedrock in order to support the enormous weight the bridge will place on them. But the forces of nature were stacked against them. Geologists have warned of the risks posed by the region's fractured limestone. The rock is full of cavities, cavities that are essential to the local cheese economy. These cave systems close to Milau are home to a unique bacteria responsible for the blue mold in the world famous Roquefort cheese. But what's perfect for cheese could be disastrous for a megastructure. The geologist's diagnosis spelt one thing, landslides. This kind of catastrophe could jeopardize the entire project. Despite the warnings, building went ahead as planned. Then, well into construction, as predicted, a dramatic storm causes a landslide. Four thousand cubic meters of rock collapse around Pier 1. Fortunately, the fallen rock doesn't damage the pier, but the warning is clear. 
They're forced to divert precious manpower and equipment to stabilize the slope and prevent a repeat collapse. So if the area is prone to landslides, why did they build the world's tallest bridge here in the first place? The answer is simple. In the 1980s, France built a freeway linking Paris directly with Spain. This major artery headed south across the French countryside, while from the Mediterranean, the freeway headed north. Until they both hit one of the deepest valleys in France and stopped dead. Welcome to Milau, France's least favorite bottleneck. The town of Milau is in the mountainous region of the Massif Central, one of the most tranquil parts of France. But in summer, this poor medieval town suffered traffic hell. The locals couldn't take it anymore. Neither could their mayor. It was terrible for our reputation. When you hear every day on the television and radio, avoid Malau, there's a traffic backup, a five-hour wait in Malau. And it's not just the people of Malau. Two drivers, Jamila and Jemima, crossing the 30-odd kilometers between the freeway on either side of Malau, reveal exactly why this bridge is needed. Jamila, in car 33, will cross the new bridge while in car 22, Jemima will take the old road across the valley floor. Getting straight on the freeway, car 33 approaches the Malau Bridge after just 18 minutes. The only delay is the 30 seconds it takes to get through the toll booth. Then driving at 100 kilometers an hour over the spectacular bridge, she takes just 32 minutes to get to the other side. Car 22, meanwhile, is just beginning the crawl through the medieval streets of Malau. Cyclists, pedestrians, people with dogs all need to be negotiated. Car 22 then has the long haul up the other side of the valley. The final timing is a staggering one hour and 35 minutes over an hour longer than Jamila, who took the freeway and bridge. It's clear exactly why the bridge was needed, but it took the French government a very long time to get round to building it. Twelve years before construction began up in Paris, the Ministry of Transport first came up with a plan. Their head bridge builder, Michel Villogeux, is no ordinary engineer. He's a man who thinks big, very big, like the Normandy Bridge in northern France, the longest cable state span in the world. With this record-breaking structure completed, Villogeux was on to his next, Milau. His plan, another cable state bridge, but pushing the technology beyond anything previously attempted with piers four times higher than the Normandy Bridge. The Malau Bridge would not only be the world's tallest, it would be unlike any bridge ever constructed. When I've shown first the drawing of this bridge to, to the convenient authorities, they, they really thought I was crazy. Villager's Normandy Bridge has two sets of cables supporting the deck. But he wanted to up the stakes for Malau by losing one row of cables, so the remaining line would be forced to do twice the work. More dramatically, the 2.5 kilometer Malau Bridge, instead of having a single main span, needed a whole series of piers to support it across the valley. No one had ever attempted a multiple span, single line cable stay bridge on this scale before. The French authorities had a problem. Nervous about Villageur's groundbreaking scheme, they held a competition, inviting other engineers and architects to compete with different designs. The winner, Lord Norman Foster, is one of the world's superstar architects. In Hong Kong, he built the world's largest airport terminal. In Barcelona, 